Today on the Tech Bytes podcast from the Packet Pushers, our topic is digital experience management or DEM DEM. With distributed and remote work becoming more accepted, IT organizations are looking for better ways to monitor and manage the user experience when employees are accessing networks that are outside of IT's control. And today we're going to talk about DEM with our sponsor, Palo Alto Networks. And our guest is Anupam Apigaya. He is Senior Director of Product Management at Palo Alto. Uh, Anupam, welcome to the podcast. Let's start with an overview of digital experience management for folks who might not be familiar with it. What is it? Why is there a need for it? First of all, thanks for having me here. So DEM, if you look at DEM, digital experience management, it's a Gartner term. But really, if you look at what's driving DEM, even before COVID, we had some apps, there's this digitization happening. Some apps are sitting in the cloud, some apps are sitting in data center, and people are working from anywhere, right? In offices, at home. And there was this challenge for IT professionals to have end-to-end visibility because when they're sitting at home, customers are using their Wi-Fi, customers are using consumer-grade ISPs, right? To Mm. access applications in the cloud. And then COVID happened. And once COVID happened, as employees started working from home, the number of remote locations just exploded, right? It became massive. Everyone became a branch of one and every home became a remote location. And now everyone is trying to access applications in the cloud, applications in the enterprise. And the IT guys are trying to ensure that they can provide the same experience for employees at home while they had at office. This coupled with the lack of visibility, they do not have an end-to-end visibility as to what's happening inside the home, what's happening on the ISP, caused a huge ID support nightmare. And when you look at traditional tools, they were not really equipped to handle this work from home and this digitization initiative. And they were not sufficient for IT to provide visibility and provide good experience for working from home. It's really interesting how the transition that we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months has basically highlighted that the fact that we had no monitoring in our campus networks, but we didn't need to because you're inside the campus where everything is guaranteed, where you can go and touch the, see the user, you know what the network bandwidth looks like. may not be perfect, but you know what it looks like. Whereas when you suddenly work, you know, outside the office in a distributed format, whether it's in a at home or in a coffee shop or in a serviced office or rented office space, all of a sudden the question of bandwidth becomes variable. And that's what, to me, that's the key thing about digital experience monitoring is this idea that the situation changed. You're not sitting in a known space on a known system. You have a bunch of intangibles and unknowables and you need to gain visibility to change that. That is spot on. I mean, if you look at it, Building on what you said, right? Yeah. Let's just think about us sitting at home. Endpoint, how are end users, devices, Wi-Fi, local networks performing? Traffic, how is application traffic behaving for that remote user? Path, entire network path, starting from my laptop to my Wi-Fi, to the ISP, to the cloud, to the app. How is that path performing, right? How is the app performing? All those are the problems that DM is really (laughs) trying to solve for. But it's that, and that's the point of digital experience monitoring is to attack that uncertainty, to come up with a way to say, sure, it's uncertain, but you can't fix it, perhaps, although we can fix it. There are ways to fix it, of course, but what you need to be able to do is to know where the problem exists. So digital experience monitoring is about not only monitoring the network, but monitoring that whole location to destination uh, now that we're using a distributed, now that work is distributed, wherever it might be. Correct. And Andrew, we like to call it digital experience management because we yeah. just don't want to stop at monitoring. We want to manage that experience for you, right? Mm-hmm. And if I talk about this, Greg, a bit from a Palo Alto perspective, we really thought about three pillars, right? So before we talk about Palo Alto, if you think about our SASE solution, at the end of the day, we're offering customers a service which is secure access as a service. We are going to secure all your traffic. We are going to make sure that no bad actors enter your network, compromise your network or users. And when we offer that service, we are very cognizant that if something goes wrong, Mm. it's mission critical for the customer. And the burden of proof is on us to show where the issue might be. The issue might be on our side 
or the issue mm. might be the ISP or the app. But it's yeah. really, we owe it to the customer to show where the issue is. So two things there. One is you're saying it's not just monitoring, it's management. You're actually closing the loop. So monitoring right. is, oh, look, it's running slow. Right. Yay. <laughs> you know, you clap hands and everybody goes, well, hey, we found the problem, but it doesn't help you fix it. Management implies that there's some sort of tooling there that says, ah, oh, we know that there's a problem and we think we've got some suggestions that you could take or that type of approach. Is that how Palo Alto is approaching this? We sort of thought about it from three pillars. And we'll t I'll talk about two which are very obvious, right? Mm -hmm. And one which you talked about, end-to-end -end comprehensive visibility. I'm going to tell you the entire network path. The second is what we call segment-wise insights. So what that means is, look, there are multiple segments, right, Greg? Like we said, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, LAN, WAN, cloud, apps. I'm going to tell you which segment is having a problem and what could the problem be? I'm also going to baseline the all segments for you and tell you, hey, is the problem just for Greg? Is the problem in San Jose? Is the problem in California? Is the problem mm -hmm. worldwide, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last part, which is one of the key differentiations for us, it's SASE native. And what that really means is, from Palo Alto, you've bought a service, you've deployed that service. And as you deploy that service, we enable DM as part of that service. We're not asking you to put more software in. We're not asking you to put more probes in. You deploy our service in the cloud and bingo. We enable ADEM right off the bat for you. So those become the three pillars of our strategy. SASE native, end-to-end -end comprehensive visibility, and segment-wise insights. Okay, so I want to make sure I understand closer here because my impression with the digital experience management space is that there usually tends to be some kind of agent on a device uh, so I can get an end-to-end -end measurement. You're saying, do you do that as well? And you also tie the cloud in? How does it all fit together? So if you look at our SASE solution, let's talk about people like you and I sitting at home right now and trying to get work done, right? So when you buy our SASE solution, you have a global protect agent which provides you the VPN service, right? To connect back securely to the cloud or to your on-prem, right? And as you enable that VPN, that VPN client also enables the DM functionality, right? So there's no need to deploy new software. So that was part one of your question. Then the second question that you asked was, okay, that's great. You have client-side visibility where you can sort of run telemetry and other interesting stuff. What's happening on the other side? Now, since you're, you're consuming our service in the cloud, we are also enabling DM functionality in the cloud as well for you, right? So it's sort of uh, working on both ends. Okay, so to make sure I understand then, I've got the endpoint part so I can get the path from you know the endpoint to say a SaaS application, but you also have a different perspective, a different vantage point because you've got points of presence all over where I could run maybe remote tests to see what's going on globally. So let's dive a bit deeper on this part, right? So when you think about digital experience management, there are two things you can do. One is I can run synthetics, which means the customer tells, hey, for my enterprise, these are the applications of interest. It could be G Suite, Office, what have you, right? And then you say, hey, run synthetics for me. And then what we do is we are running synthetics from every endpoint that you have with us, right? Mm. And then we're also running synthetics from every vantage point in the cloud, right? Mm. Because we leverage providers like GCP, AWS, we have presence all over the world, right? So now yeah. we're running synthetics to the application from the cloud and from the endpoint. And that is what truly allows us to build those segment-wise insights. Now there's another element, right? A lot of times you see interesting traffic happening on a network for which you might not be running synthetics. And that's where we also do something called RAM or real user monitoring. And what that does is that is looking at, because all your traffic is being inspected by our security stack in the cloud. I'm looking at all your traffic and figuring out what other traffic is of interest. So then I can tell you, hey, Greg, although you asked me to run synthetics on Office 365 and G Suite, I'm seeing a lot of Zoom traffic in your network. Yeah. Do you want to run synthetics on that as well, right? So that combination of RAM and synthetics truly allows us to build that baseline and deviation for... Yeah, the synthetics is super important to that uh, monitoring and management because you can actually run them at specified times of day. There's a couple of things you can do. You can now say, 
oh, we tend to have more problems. You ask the user in the field, and they say, oh, we have more problems in the morning than we do the afternoon. So you run your synthetics in the morning. And then what you do is you run them out of hours to see if it's a load problem. And that's the great part about synthetics is because you can you don't actually monitor the traffic when it's occurring. You can actually monitor it in a time zone and get relative data. Whereas if you're doing something like net flow analysis, all you can say is at this point in time, this flow was performing badly. Very good. Very good. Not helpful, yep. but good, right? Yep. You know? yep. Like you said, synthetics, you can sort of time it and real user monitoring, like the name says, is intercepting traffic in real time and telling you mm. what's happening in your network. And if I remember rightly, the product that Palo Alto used, this product actually lets me do some, I, there's a lot of preset synthetic testing that I can do. I don't have to do a whole lot of work to create a, a basic portfolio of synthetic tests, but I can actually get quite advanced if I so choose. I can actually get down to starting to, I want to do this HTTP command and so forth and log in and download this and, and use that whole. That's not the whole digital performance monitoring. It's just some basic synthetic testing. Yeah, you bring up two very interesting points. One is when I said SASE native in the beginning, right? Because you have deployed our GP agent on your endpoints, mm -hmm. or let's say if you're in the branch, you've deployed our SD-WAN device, which will also run synthetics and RUM, real user monitoring in the future. And you have our Prism access in the cloud. So what's happening is when you enable that DEM switch, we've actually been looking at your traffic. So right at the go, as you go to the DM portal, we tell you, Greg, hey, these are the applications that we are seeing which are of interest in your network. And then we can say, hey, do you want us to run synthetics for you for these applications? So it's very easy, very intuitive for you to figure out what is the application of interest in your network because we have been monitoring all that traffic and enable the synthetics. And are there different kinds of synthetic tests I can run if I want to say like, understand the round trip time between an endpoint and a cloud application or look at throughput on a link, that kind of thing? Absolutely. Let's dive a bit deeper out of this, right? Ultimately, what are you monitoring? You're monitoring the app, you're monitoring the path, you're monitoring the network. So for app, you can do, like you said, HTTP test. For path, trace route. For end-to-end, -end, you do ICMP pings. You can do application pings, right? And it's just doesn't stop there, right? You're also doing underlay trace route, right, for the underlay network, and for the overlay, you're also doing a trace route. And that is what allows us to do that per hop loss, jit, latency, jitter, and path visualization. So all these, a combination of underlay and overlay tests, which comprising of ICMP, HTTP, trace route, and application things allows us to build that per segment wise insights. One other aspect I think we haven't touched on is for the home user, as you mentioned earlier, there are so many uh, steps between them and the application. One of those steps, or at least two of them are the Wi-Fi and the ISP. Is there anything information-wise or performance-wise you can do for that, the, the, that sort of last or first mile? So the best way to sort of look at this question is, let's talk about now, right? We are sitting on Zoom, right? And let's say there's a performance issue with Zoom. And that issue could happen because of a, issue with the application itself on the laptop. Hey, there's an OS issue or there's a memory contention. There's a CPU contention. That's part number one. Second is like you said, it could be a Wi-Fi issue. The third is it could be from the Wi-Fi to the ISP. And since we are sitting on the endpoint client, we are actually able to look at all these three elements, right? What's happening on the device, what's happening on the local network, and what's happening on the ISP. So that truly allows us to sort of figure out where the issue on the LAN side is. And let's say the issue is not on the LAN side, Greg. The issue is, okay, the LAN side is actually pretty fine. Everything looks good from the endpoint client. RSSI check, Wi-Fi is beautiful. Zoom is getting all the CPU and all the memory that it requires check. Hey, the, the path to ISP is actually fine. Then the issue could be, well, as I get to the cloud and the security processing node, the Prisma Access Service, could they should be there? Yeah, okay. You can sort of check for that. And since you're also running synthetics and real user monitoring from the Prisma Access Service Processing Node, you could also figure out as the traffic egresses from the security processing node. You said real user monitoring. Now you're starting to get into another area that the analysts define as a separate thing. They normally say DEM is this and RUM is this and never the twain shall meet, but I actually believe they're all the same thing, right? 
there was a historical thing where digital experience management was a separate thing, but now it's just to me as just part of SASE. For most customers, you bring it, you get it in SASE. You want it to be part of the SASE. It should be unified as part of your SD WAN strategy, if that makes sense. Well, that is absolutely right. If you think about it, when we think about SASE, it's branch and mobile user. And as you go to branch, SD WAN is a critical component of our strategy. It's an essential component of our strategy. So mm-hmm. as this pandemic wanes and we all hopefully go back to our offices, right? And you have mm-hmm. our SD WAN devices. Now those SD WAN devices are also going to run synthetics. If you're feeling unsafe or insecure about moving to the public net WAN, so if you're moving away from a private WAN to a public WAN and you feel nervous that you're not getting bandwidth guarantees, deploying the the digital experience management means you can take away that risk. You can know what's happening per user right at the edge. And so your SD-WAN deployment then becomes much more certain and you're much more confident about how you're progressing, particularly as you do the rollout because you can be monitoring each of those users and monitoring what SD-WAN is doing for them. Yeah. Just think about that, right? Once you know that a particular app is, let's say, having a performance issue on one path, you can seamlessly switch that application to a different path. So that's the management part, right? Hey, look, that's right. Yeah. I know where the problem is. I can actually go and start solving it for you. So I want to, one more thing before we wrap, I thought you mentioned that part of the digital experience management piece also includes evaluating the performance of, if I'm using your Prisma SASE service, that's part of the thing I get. I can sort of hold you to account with this tool as well. Is that right? Yeah. So if you look at our armory of <laughs> solutions, right? There is this digital experience management and there's there's a Prisma Access Insight solution that we have. And that is actually what you said, right? Prisma Access Insights gives us visibility into what's happening to Prisma Access infrastructure. So it's the perfect complement to our digital experience management solution. You take Prisma Access Insights, which is part of the base offer of the product, and you get full visibility about what's happening in our infrastructure and if there are any potential issues with our infrastructure. Well, this does wrap up the time we have. Anupam, thank you for joining us, and thanks to Palo Alto Networks for being a sponsor. If folks want to find out more, where would you send them to go? Go visit paloaltonetworks.com slash prisma slash ADEM, A-D-E-M, and you'll find all the information that we talked about at that landing page. Fantastic. That's paloaltonetworks.com slash prisma slash A-D-E-M. Uh, thanks again to Palo Alto Networks for being a sponsor, and thank you for listening. If you like this episode, there are many more fine, free technical podcasts and our community blog. It's all at packetpushers.net. You can follow us on Twitter at Packet Pushers. Find us on LinkedIn, and please do rate us on Apple Podcasts. Last but not least, remember that too much networking would never be enough. <laughs>